this is the reason why everyone must join me in praying this prayer tonight satisfy me early with your mercy something happens to you when pain becomes prolonged you no longer see the possibility of God's faithfulness something happens to you when poverty when sickness when infirmities prolong someone say satisfy me early this is the kind of sermon that you don't want to mix i want to congratulate you it is not a mistake that you tune in to this channel to listen to god's servant opposed to joshua sermon you will be blessed at the end of this sermon. Ensure you follow and listen attentively. Don't let anything distract you. Till the end of this sermon, you will be blessed. Thank you and continue to watch. The Bible says a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Everybody say was carried. My goodness. That doesn't look like a miracle till you hear me for a minute or two. The first miracle that happened to him was not his healing. But that certain man, watch this, they believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily. Daily, not weekly. Have you ever attended to a sick person? There are times that even as the loved one of that sick person, you honestly get tired and weary. It is a miracle when men believe in you indefinitely, when there are no results yet in your life. It's a real miracle. The Bible says certain men, he was carried, whom they laid daily. What is the first miracle? That certain men believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily daily now connected to that miracle still the first miracle was where they laid him at the bible says they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful <laughs> they laid him at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful listen to me do you know what that means now i've studied that beautiful gate concept it was beautiful the word beautiful gate came there because other materials within the temple were made of gold and silver but that particular gate was made of bronze but the bronze was so polished in fact it was called corinthian bronze it was so polished to an extent that when light came it glowed and illuminated even more than the other doors beautiful gate they laid him there and the miracle started happening to his perception. There was something he saw at that gate. He could not see where he was coming from. There was something that he saw at that gate he could not afford to see in his house. It mattered that what he was seeing was beautiful even though his life was ugly. Beautiful gate. Is someone learning? The first miracle was that certain men believed in him believed in him enough to carry him and lay him daily at a place which could start correcting his perception and building his faith this was what they did those men helped him they were the original foundation when you hear rise up and walk you credit it to peter and to john but i'm telling you you are wrong the first sponsors of those miracles were nameless, faceless, divine connectors and burden bearers. No name, but their impact could not be denied. When you receive a healing, it's easy to be credited to God through Joshua Selman, but the nameless person who told you come for koinonia, the nameless person who said, are you going for koinonia? Can I give you a lift? You don't even know the name of the person. The greatest miracles we celebrate are not usually the first to happen. There is always a build up of a foundation. When you celebrate a great, I don't know anybody who claps for foundations. We clap for buildings. This beautiful building is suspended from a very solid foundation. See that now? 
I know you celebrate the job, but how about the one who told you don't give up? Try applying one last time. The Bible says men who took him daily. Someone say daily. daily. The miracle is in their refusing to be tired that they carried the fact that they carried him daily meant they returned him back at night he would not be left there every day why are you wasting your time speaking to my destiny i'm already a failure and mama says not that you are my son if it would take 20 years i will know one day god will raise a preacher to speak to you let me tell you when you are clapping for me make sure you clap for her too god use both of us it is amazing the amount of silent people who have played mysterious roles in our lives that may never be seen, may never be congratulated. They are not enlightened enough to be recognized and honored. Yet today we stand upon the foundation of those people. Remember the one who woke you up every night. You were angry but you still went for the devotion. Today you are a pastor. Are we together? Remember your uncle who told you by 4 p.m. return home. You are still a child. You said I'm 13 years. He said go out of my house then. If you feel you can make it on your own. Once you are under my care, return home by evening. That's the reason why you are a good father today. You would have been a careless person roaming around around. But someone planted that seed. It was while you sat in one place that you had the opportunity to read a book that began to culture your mindset. We owe those nameless people who refuse to be tired. What if a night before the man's miracle, the man said, we have tried. You too, you know we have tried. Tomorrow we will not be around. Their consistency is what made the apostle to be able to look at him. Hmm. Is someone learning? I hope you've not forgotten what we are discussing rise up and walk i'm showing you how to access extraordinary dimensions these are just observations we are bringing out of that story hmm. so the first miracle that happened to this man still on point five was that certain men believed in him i've taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Can I recap for one minute? That in your life, as far as the ministry of men is concerned, you will encounter four kinds of destiny helpers. Number one, they are called divine connectors. These men served as divine connectors. They didn't have the power to heal the man, but they were able to help him and take him where he could be healed. Number two, men of influence. These are the second groups of divine, of destiny helpers, men of influence. They have the credibility, they have the track record to be able to recommend you. Their names are keys. They can open doors and gates for you. Number three, gifted men. You need gifted people. They will close leakages and wastages from your life, your organization. One gifted man can have the strength of 50 people. Number four, burden bearers. I've taught you that burden bearers don't have the power to move you forward. Their assignment is to stop you from going backward. These are men who love you regardless. They don't love you because you are a preacher. They don't love you because you are CEO. They love you sincerely. That even when the crown is not on your head, they are still there. Even when you do not have the garment as Jesus, they are still there. May you find such men in your life. If you are surrounded by only people who celebrate the crown, the scepter, or the throne, you will be in trouble. Because the day your crown is not there, these are the three things that make a king. His crown, his scepter, and his throne. But there are times, even if you are Jesus, you will have to give up that crown, give up that throne, give up that scepter, and become a man. At such points, may God give you burden bearers. Remember another incident of burden bearers? The men who tore the zinc and brought another crippled man. They insisted that they wanted this man to be healed. And on hearing that Jesus was organizing a conference, 
There was no way they could come in because of the crowd. And the Bible says they literally tore the roof and brought that man in. In other words, whatever consequence, let it be on us. And Jesus said when he saw their faith. One thing we learn from that scripture is the man who was crippled never spoke. All those who did the speaking were his friends. The man who needed the miracle himself was quiet. That there are men who can stand up and take your matter on their head until you smile. May God bring such people to your life. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to see the second miracle that happened? All right, so number two, the second miracle. I hope I've not lost you. We're still discussing the fifth observation. And at under point five, one or A if you want, the first miracle was the willingness of certain men to believe in him enough to carry him and to lay him daily without getting tired, without expressing their anger or exhaustion, and that they placed him at the gate beautiful, a place that could begin to alter and correct his perception. How many of you know that when you are kept close to a gate and you don't have the power to move, you are forced to keep seeing? It's not that he had the liberty to rest, he would sleep and wake up and all that was before him was the gate. And if you think what you see does not matter, ask the cattle that Jacob reared in Laban's house. What led to their multiplication, their change of state? Something they saw. Are we learning? The second miracle was the ability for that man. This is where we give the crippled man credit. The second miracle was the ability to look beyond his pain. The ability to look beyond his legitimate resentments and to humble himself to be carried. The second miracle that happened there was the ability for that man to look beyond his pain and to allow himself to be carried every day. It's one thing to want to carry the man, but the man had the power to say, I'm tired of this mockery. He would have called that help mockery. It takes a lot of humility to look beyond your pain, especially because we live in a world where we hate drawing sympathy. Nobody wants to be told, hey, yeah, it's not sorry, eh? Do you think they just carried him silently? I'm sure one day they would carry him. What if the man wanted to use the toilet? What if the man wanted to take his bath? It would look like mockery, but they had to carry him. The humility to look beyond his pain, legitimate anger and resentment, and allow himself to be carried. That was the second miracle. Is someone learning? It takes a lot of humility. A scripture is coming to my mind. Thank you, Jesus. What scripture is that now? Help us. Luke 16. I think that's Luke 16. A parable that Jesus gave about an arrogant man who was ashamed to beg. Look for it. Luke either verse 1, 2 or 3. Media help me. Luke chapter 16. Yes. Watch this. Just the first three or four verses. And he said, please let me have your attention. Unto the disciples. Jesus now. There was a certain rich man which had a steward he had a what steward a caretaker and the same man was accused that he had wasted his goods. so the steward of the rich man was a careless man verse 2 and he called him and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give an account of thy stewardship he said for thou mayest be no longer a steward i'm going to fire you watch what the man said verse 3 beautiful this is what i'm looking for then the steward said within himself, are you seeing pride now? What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me stewardship. I cannot dig and to beg I am ashamed. There are people like this. Give us NIV, verse 3. NIV please, or amplified anyone. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? my master is taking away my job watch this <laughs> i am not strong enough to dig and i am ashamed to beg may you not be like this yeah. that a man can lack capacity and yet even where help can be offered he said i am ashamed 
it's a miracle when you find a man who is humble enough to be carried there are people today if only they have the opportunity and the humility to ask please god is helping me but i have a situation right now with my house rent i am not careless can mercy be shown me shame can be taken away with one alert but they can remain there punish their wives punish their children punish everybody i'm too big to beg i know what to do there are people who are too big to be prayed for there are people who are too big to be counseled it's a miracle when a man becomes humble enough to be carried every day maybe once a while that's all, all right but every day it is extreme humility to not only carry a man but that the man allows himself to be carried can you allow yourself to be carried on the wings of prophecy one day you'll be able to walk but while you are still leprous can you allow even if you are moses you will be carried for a while even if you are Jesus, you will be carried for a while. One day you will save the world, but not as a baby. While you are a baby, Herod can kill you. Allow Joseph and Mary to carry you to the place of safety. Moses, you are born a deliverer, but not as a baby. Look left and right and you will see the dead corpses of children that have been wasted because they are searching for you. If help comes while you are rising, don't reject it. Did you hear what I said? If help comes while you are rising, please don't reject it. When you find genuine help, don't reject it. If I were that man, I don't know how many times my ego will be stung. But one thing I know I would have obtained grace to do was to say thank you every day. That while these men carry me on the way to the gate beautiful, I would say gentlemen, I do not take your generosity for granted. I don't have the power to help myself, but thank you. At a point, they'll be tired and say, don't stop saying thank you every day. But I will reply by telling them, for as long as you carry me, that thank you must come out of my mouth. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the greatest person you owe thanks. Some of you never say thank you, Jesus, till you come to church. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ah, for life, for strength, for health. Thank you, Jesus. For salvation, for healing, for my mindset, the transformation happening. Thank you. For the anointing you are bringing to my ministry. Thank you. Someone say thank you. Someone say thank you. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are carried, give thanks. When you are helped by God and helped by man, give thanks. Give thanks. Never take the help of God and the help of men for granted. Give thanks. Give thanks. I hope that man went back to look for those people to say thank you when he received his healings. Beware of times when your helpers do not need to help you again because God has taken you forward. Still don't forget them. If they were in your yesterday, they still deserve your thank you. Don't just say thank you because they are helping. No. It's been 10 years now. You don't need their help again. You are now a millionaire. That is the foolishness of many people. Helped by parents. Helped by preachers. Helped by destiny helpers. When God helps them to become, they do not have the fortitude to reach back to say thank you. Not to God, not to men. Some of you may need to think about people who did something yesterday in your life and obtained grace. 1,000. 100,000. What for? I've not heard from you for 15 years. Just to let you know that I remembered something you did before. They were about to carry me to a herbalist. And you said, no, come and keep me, keep this boy in my house. I will train the child. And he trained you for three years. Don't say only three years. And don't send them a text saying, many people have helped my life. You are one of them. That's an unwise way to say thank you. When you are saying thank you to people, don't do that. Don't say, many people have changed my life just to let you know you are one of them. Don't make the ability to carry you to the gate look insignificant. They didn't have the power to heal you. But if Peter did not see you, you would die a leper. Most of the time we are limited by ourselves, not by God. God cannot limit anyone. Remember, the Bible said, can a father 
give his son or daughter stone in place of bread. God didn't create you to limit you. Rather, we limit ourselves to some certain things. There are things that are required you do in order to receive restoration and to receive everything that you desire in life. Someone will say, I want to be a graduate, and he or she is not ready to write, to sit for work and sit for jump exams, and also sit for pursue me. And he or she said, I want to be a graduate. Is that possible? Can't be possible. You need to sit for a WIAC examination. You need to sit for jump and sit for pursue me before you can be qualified to go to university and sit for exams for four good years, five years, six years, depending on your course, before you can graduate to be a graduate. Same thing apply as a Christian or as a child of God. There is things that are required that you do to be in that position that you want to be. There are things you require that you do. That is why God's servant apostle Joshua Seman educate us on a daily basis, inspire us with his word, with his sermon on a daily basis, Changes, change our mentality by the word that he unleashed to us. Today, I hope you have been blessed. Don't fold your hand and say, God, or somebody, or this or that. The major reason you have not attained to that height, you are the major reason. Nobody is the reason. If only you can follow the steps or follow everything God's servant has taught us on today's sermon, you will be amazed by what you can achieve and how you can couple 20 years ago in just five years. It will amaze you. I congratulate you again for listening to Apostle Joshua Seman. And I want to create your indulgence to do everything, follow it accordingly, the way he has explained. You will be blessed. Share this video to everyone. Let it go viral. Like, comment, and subscribe. You will always get our latest video. God bless you.